Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Hindustan Unilever Limited conference call for the results of March quarter and financial year ended 31st March 2024. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. A. Ravi Shankar, Vice President Finance. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Ashishri. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the conference call of Hindustan Unilever Limited. This evening, we will cover the results of March quarter and financial year ended 31st March 2024. On the call with me is Rohit Jawa, CEO and Managing Director, and Ritesh Tiwari, CFO. We will start with prepared remarks from Rohit and Ritesh where we will cover an overview of our performance in the financial year and in March quarter and our future outlook. We expect this to take around 30 minutes which will leave us with an hour for the Q&A session. Before we get started with the presentation, I would like to draw your attention to the safe harbor statement statement included in the presentation for good order sake. With that over to you Rohit. Thank you Ravi. Uh, good evening everyone. Thank you for joining us on the call today. It's always a pleasure to interact with all of you. Uh, let me first start with an overview of the operating context for financial year 24. With softening in prices of key commodities, especially those in home care and personal care, we passed on this benefit to consumers. Consequently, there was a nominal to no price growth in the year. Volume recovery remained gradual due to high levels of cumulative inflation. over the past few years coupled with a weak monsoon affecting rural demand urban organized trade and premium portfolio stayed resilient and led growth for fmcg overall given this context we delivered a resilient performance for the year with an underlying sales growth of 3% and an underlying volume growth of 2% ebitda margin was up 40 bps year on year we continue to focus on operational excellence and build back our gross margins with a substantial part of this being reinvested behind brands and capabilities net profit crossed the milestone of 10000 crores in the fiscal pack before exceptional items and eps grew 4% and 2% respectively moving on to our competitive performance it's important to look at corporate market shares in met business winning metric over a longer period to fully appreciate the impact of the inflation deflation cycle on these metrics compared to 2021 we have improved our corporate market share by almost 200 bps as you said previously we had seen resurgence of small and regional players who had vacated the market during peak on inflation consequently in recency we have seen a marginal dip in our market shares but it's important to note we are holding on to almost all of the gains made in 2021 and 2022 last quarter we discussed how we expect our met business winning metric to be impacted as we lack the high base while the metric has dipped below 60% this quarter we are confident that it will come back towards the second half of calendar year 2024 our business fundamentals continue to remain strong as can be evidenced by healthy penetration gains and business is growing a stable brand power as we continue to expand our physical and mental reach i have first spoken to you about key thrust areas which you are in our october earnings call a lot of what we have already been doing has strengthened our business and we continue to build on it however it's equally critical for us to transform our business to serve the changing consumer aspirations to ensure we outperform in the years to come let me delve into the progress we made against each one of these thrusts during the fiscal quarter Our first task is to grow the core to unmissable brand superiority. This chart is evidence that we are a powerhouse of big purposeful brands. We have a total of 19 brands clocking over 1000 crores each in annual turnover. Put together these 19 brands account for over 80% of our turnover. Clinic Plus is now a 2000 crore brand for us. Having moved moved up the table in the fiscal boost Sunsilk and Vaseline on the next three brands that are moving towards the 1000 crore mark consumers are increasingly discerning and are making well informed holistic buying decisions 
We started on our product superiority journey to provide best-in-class products and over the years have made very good progress in the space. With evolving consumer needs, we are now broadening the way we measure and deliver superiority. Under the framework of unmissable brand superiority, we will measure our products against six tangible and distinct drivers, namely the six Ps, all of which are proven drivers of consumer preference. We have already embarked on this journey of making our brand unmissably superior, and I will take you through two examples to bring this concept alive. Starting with Vim Liquids. During the year, we have driven multiple initiatives across each of the six Ps to land an unmissably superior product in the market. From improving formulation to sharpening proposition and modifying the packaging to be more aspirational and ergonomical. Specific actions are taken to address each driver of consumer preference. The result of these actions has been promising when we could have seen a double digit volume growth in FI24 with highest penetration gains in over a decade and continued market leadership. Holix is another example of a brand that has pivoted its actions around the 60s to deliver an unmissably superior brand. We have sharpened and fortified the proposition of taller, stronger, and sharper through precise and focused communications, packaging redesign, and promotions. We have dialed up nutrition science information at the face of the pack, providing consumers with crucial information about the product. As a result of these actions, the brand has significantly extended its position in the market, penetration, market shares, and brand power have all seen improvement year on year. We are confident that our journey from product superiority to unmissable brand superiority will take our brands from strength to strength and solidify our market leadership. Moving on to market making and premiumization. Given the context of increasing affluence and under-indexed FMCG consumption, we have a huge opportunity to build categories of the future through market making and premiumization. We are doing this through personal communications, by the right medium, innovating in new demand spaces and formats of the future, and educating consumers at scale. During the year, we've used these levers to disproportionately invest in market making and premium sales. For instance, more than 75% of incremental media investment was spent on market making and premium sales. Similarly, more than 70% 70 of our innovation turnover also came from these sales. We continue to lean in on home-to-home -home connects to drive trial and usage. As a result of these sustained investments in market making and premiumization, we now have a very robust portfolio that is leading growth for us. We have not only seized categories and formats, but have successfully built them to scale. The portfolio you see on the slide contributes to more than 25% of our business and has grown double digits this financial year. I had previously spoken about the job we have to do to continue transforming parts of our portfolio to on-trend demand spaces, especially in beauty and foods. Let me give you an update on the beauty segment today. We are the largest beauty company in India with a history of creating categories across skin care, hair care, and color cosmetics, making us the distant number one in these segments. In our journey of transforming our beauty business, we are focusing on A, contemporizing our current master brands, B, investing behind identified high growth demand spaces, and C, embedding capabilities across supply chain, mental reach, media models, and thought leadership. We have led significant transformation across our key master brands, and results of a few are here for you to see. We've re-advanced our brands by refreshing product, packaging, communication, and innovating them into new demand spaces and formats. The Indian beauty market is rapidly shifting with changing lifestyles, increased disposable incomes, exposure to global trends, and a growing emphasis on self-care and wellness. We've identified six key demand spaces, big bets, which we believe will grow disproportionately over the next few years. We have already a strong 2,000 crore portfolio across these big bets, and we continue to invest to scale them up. This portfolio delivered a double-digit growth this fiscal, with a circa 50% growth in e-commerce. To build and bring our vision of creating a world-class beauty company to life, we are embedding core capabilities into our process processes. Let's talk about three critical capabilities. Make for beauty. Our focus is to enhance desirability of products using superior technology, premium packaging solutions, and formats. To continue to innovate with speed, we will invest to expand our footprint of nanofactories and supply chain for smalls. Reach for beauty. 
Consumer journeys will increasingly become non-linear and on digital mediums, and hence we are pivoting our mental reach model towards more digital media and influencer marketing. Authority for beauty. Building on our 20 plus years experience in creating India's most iconic beauty moments through the Lakshma Fashion Week, we are creating a beauty council with key opinion leaders from the fashion and the beauty industry. In January this year, we unveiled our first edition of the Beauty Collective, through which we aim to strengthen beauty partnerships with e-commerce and modern trade customers. Through these actions, we aim to build a future fit portfolio and capabilities that will enable us to meet the evolving needs of Indian uh, beauty consumers. Our fourth thrust of leadership in channels of the future is about brilliant execution and curating a tailored portfolio and leveraging our design for channel approach. In general trade, we're focusing on expanding and fortifying our distribution mode. Our effective coverage and assortment both have seen a steady rise standing at 1.2 and 1.25 times of full year 20 levels, respectively. Our eBeauty app, Shikhar, continues to be a strong point of differentiation for us, and we have successfully onboarded 1.3 million stores in Shikhar till now. We have enhanced Shikhar's functionalities to include loyalty programs, innovative marketing campaigns, and best-in-class app features. These are yielding good results for us. For instance, stores onboarded on Shikhar are growing faster than the other stores. We've elevated our execution excellence by amplifying our in-store activations and through strong partnerships with customers in modern trade and e-commerce. As a result of our focus actions, we've increased our on-shelf availability by 200 basis points in modern trade and online availability by 500 basis points in e-commerce. These strategic thrusts are underpinned by our distinctive capabilities that we continue to strengthen. Let me speak briefly on each. Winning in many Indians is a capability that will continue to embed deeply across our organization, allowing us to cater to differentiated needs of Indian consumers. Our net productivity program is crucial for generating fuel for growth to invest behind our brand and capabilities. We will continue to generate efficiency across all lines of the PNL through this program. Reimagine HUL has given us a head start in our digital transmission agenda. Shikhar is a tangible example of the success of this program. We are now focusing on digital agenda of superior consumer and customer experience with an objective to sell more, save more, and manage better. Speaking about sustainability, sustainability can future-proof the company and create new opportunities. It safeguards our operations, the risks, our supply chain. Helps us attract and retain great talent and shapes our response to the most pressing and relevant global challenges we face. Going forward, we'll accelerate our sustainability agenda around four key priorities that have the biggest material impact for the business. Notably, climate, nature, plastics, and livelihood. By focusing our efforts and resources, we make our stronger, tangible progress on these complex challenges while creating opportunities for our business. Our distinctive and meritocratic culture has helped us attract and retain the best talent in the country. During the year, we've invested in building a future ready organization. We have separated beauty and personal care into two segments, appointed a chief digital officer and a chief sustainability officer to bring greater focus and speed and execution in these areas. We've also set up a customer strategy vertical for each business unit to operationalize and execute business unit relevant actions across channels. I am a big believer of the India story and the FCG opportunity. A journey of transform to outperform will take HUL to the next phase of growth by enabling us to continue serving the evolving aspiration of Indian consumers and win in the market. Now let me hand over to Ritesh, who will cover our results in detail. Ritesh, over to you. Thank you, Rohit, and good evening, everyone. I will now talk, uh, walk you through our in-quarter and financial year performance in more detail and also then cover our outlook. In the quarter, demand trends remain broadly similar to what we had seen in quarter 23. In this context, we delivered a resilient performance with underlying volume growth of 2%. Pricing remained marginally negative, leading to an underlying sales growth of 1%. Moving on to bottom line performance, EBITDA margin remained healthy at 23.4%. I will cover EBITDA construct in more detail later in the presentation. Profit after tax before exceptional items and profit after tax declined by 3% and 6% respectively. The difference between PAT BEI and PAT is primarily on account of lapping 
higher exceptional income in the base period. <clears throat> Let me now move to performance across our three segments. Home care and beauty and personal care segments continue to see negative UPG in the quarter. Home care grew 1% with mid-single digit volume growth. BPC USG declined by 2% with volumes remaining flat. Foods and refreshment on the other hand had positive pricing and delivered mid-single digit USG with flat volumes. We continue to see positive volume growth across most of our business. Overall, 75% of our business is growing volumes. In fact, 50% of our total business is growing volumes in mid to high single digit. Margins in all three segments remain healthy with home care and food and refreshment at 19% and beauty and personal care at 26%. I will now click down to talk about performance within each of the segments. Starting with innovations and activations in home care. Comfort, crease, easy spray, in a format innovation that refreshes your clothes on the go. It helps release wrinkles while giving your fabric a refreshing fragrance. In Surf Excel Liquid, we launched a new winning proposition of removes tough dry stains first time in the machine. Moving on to home care performance in the quarter, volumes in both fabric wash and household care grew in mid-single digit. Premium portfolio continued to lead growth. On a two-year CAGR basis, home care delivered double-digit revenue growth. Let's look at key innovations in BPC. With summer rolling in, we have launched a range of sun care products catering to different consumer needs. One of these is the invisible sunstick by Lacme, a revolutionary sunscreen that is 100% invisible on all skin tones, yet effective with SPF 50+. Dove sensitive care range of body wash and soap, which helps repair skin's beacon barrier was launched. LACME recently launched its multi layer face sticks at LACME Fashion Week. Available in two variants, these sticks replace a multi-step makeup routine with a single product. Moving on to performance in beauty and personal care, it has been a story of two halves this quarter, with a divergent trend in beauty and well-being and personal care. To give you more clarity on this, we have disclosed the underlying sales growth for the two segments this time. As communicated earlier, we will begin detailed financial reporting for the two segments from June quarter onwards. Beauty and well-being delivered a volume-driven mid-single-digit growth, whereas personal care witnessed a 10% decline. Talking about beauty and well-being, hair care delivered high single-digit growth driven by volumes. This was led by outperformance in premium brands, including Drow and Tresemme. The Porsche wash hair treatment segment continues to gain consumer traction and clock strong growths. Volumes for skin care and color cosmetics grew at low single digit. If we were to split the performance by price tiers, mass skin portfolio, including talc, declined on account of muted demand. However, premium skin continued to outperform, growing in double digits. Oral care delivered a broad-based double digit growth driven by pricing. Skin cleansing has declined on the back of price cuts taken coupled with reduction in volumes led out of mass portfolio. We are not satisfied with this performance of skin cleansing. Let me share an overview of the actions we are taking to improve the business. These are focused around four key, four key pillars of pricing, product, innovation, and channels of the future. We have adjusted pricing across relevant packs in the mass and popular segment to ensure we provide our consumers with the right price value equation. With respect to products, we are contemporizing our brand and improving formulation in our core portfolio. We are stepping up innovation intensity in fast-growing demand spaces, especially in premium portfolio. Body wash has been clocking strong growth over the last several quarters, and we will further lean into this format. The Dove Sensitive Range and Hammam Termed Variant are some of the other examples of recent innovations in premium space. We are also stepping up assortment in modern trade and e-commerce to ensure we win in these high growth channels. Whilst we expect to start seeing a change in category's performance trajectory, it is likely to take a few quarters before the full benefit is felt. Coming to innovations and activations in foods and refreshment, Brookbond Red Level Tea has always stood for bringing people together. Our Swad Apne Panka campaign embodies this ethos 
and with the latest rendition that attempts an unstereotypical portrayal of differently abled people. Ice cream had multiple innovations landing in the market before summer season kicks in. We took our very successful partnership with Cadbury forward by launching a product which gives our consumers the best of Cadbury Crackle Chocolate and Feast. Mango Duet is a winning combination of vanilla and mango that offers a superior multi-layer experience at rupees 10. Moving on to performance in FNR. T further strengthened market leadership in this quarter with strong gains in both value and volume. Business had a muted performance year on year as we continue to witness consumers downgrading. Green tea and functional tea continue to perform well. Coffee delivered double digit growth driven by pricing. Functional nutrition drinks, which includes Horlicks and Boost, delivered high single digit growth, led by outperformance in the plus range. This category continued to witness market share and penetration gains during the quarter. Foods delivered mid-single-digit growth led by soups, food solution, mayonnaise, and peanut butter. Ice cream had volume-led double-digit growth. We have had exciting launches in ice creams this quarter in lieu of upcoming season, a couple of which I spoke about in the previous slide. Let me now spend a few minutes explaining the components influencing EBITDA margin. At 23.4%, EBITDA has declined 30 BPS year-on-year. Gross margin at 51.3% has improved by 350 BPS year on year. We continue to focus on building back our gross margin through improved price coverage, mix, and net productivity initiatives. Advertisement and promotion investments at 10.8% is up 200 BPS year on year. Our absolute AMP investments was almost 300 crores higher than last year as we continue to invest competitively behind our brand and maintain share of voice ahead of share of market. We have also stepped up our digital media investments significantly as we rework our mental reach and media models with the reshaping of our portfolio. Employee benefits and other expenses at 18% is up 120 BPS year on year. This includes an impact of 30 BPS on account of staggered rate increase in royalty. The rest of the increase can be attributed to investments made in future fit capabilities and lack of price leverage. On a full year basis, other expenses and employee benefit expenses at circa 13 percentage and circa 5 percent of turnover respectively are in line with our long term trends. The culmination of consignment selling agreement with GSK will have an impact of 60 BPS starting this quarter. Hence, between this and increased royalty, there's an impact of 90 BPS on the EBITDA in the quarter. <coughs> Moving on, a summary of our performance for this quarter. I've already taken it through most of the lines in detail, pausing for a few seconds on this slide for you to read through. Coming to financial year results, Rohit has already shared the headline performance at the beginning of the presentation. Let me quickly recap the numbers. Underlying sales growth for the year was 3%. EBITDA margins remain healthy at 23.8%, up by 40 BPS year on year. PAT BEI and PAT grew by 4% and 2% respectively. Effective tax rate for the year was 26% after taking into consideration prior period tax adjustments. Moving to segmental performance for the financial year, this year has witnessed a transition from high commodity inflation to deflation in 75% of our portfolio. In this context, we have had an underlying sales growth of 3% in home care and 2% in duty and personal care led by volumes. In foods and refreshment, commodity prices remained inflationary during the year. Consequently, we delivered a mid-single digit USG driven by pricing. Margins in all three segments remained healthy with home care at 18%, beauty and personal care at 26%, and foods and refreshment at 19%. Let me now talk about the progress made in rebuilding gross margin. As you are aware, we took a hit to our gross margin during the period of high inflation as we did not price to the full extent of commodity price increase. This ensured that we had the right balance between competitive growth and margins. With more benign commodity situation this year, we focused on building back gross margin through our net productivity program 
by bridging the price versus cost gap and improved mix. We remain focused in further stepping up gross margin as this serves as a crucial source of funds for investments behind brands and capabilities. Considering our performance in the year, the Board of Directors have proposed a final dividend of Rs 24 per share. Along with interim dividend of Rs 18 per share, the total dividend for this year is Rs 42 per share with an 8% year-on-year increase. Let me now turn to outlook. We expect FMCG demand to continue improving gradually. Forecast of above normal monsoons and improving macroeconomic indicators augur well. We expect our price growth to be low single-digit decline in near term. If commodity prices remain where they are, we envisage price growth to plateau in midterm and become positive in low single digit by end of this financial year. In this context, our focus remains on driving competitive volume-led growth across our business. As I spoke earlier on skin cleansing, actions are underway to address performance in this segment and we expect to see an improvement over midterm. We will continue to generate savings through our productivity program and reinvest it behind our brands and long-term strategic capabilities while maintaining EBITDA margin at the current levels. While we expect near-term demand to recover gradually, we remain very confident of mid to long-term opportunity in Indian FMCG. India's booming economy, expanding affluent population, accelerating digital transformation coupled with under-indexed FMCG spends will spur premiumization and provide companies with a strong runway for growth. With our distinctive capabilities and our strategic thrust of transform to outperform, HUL is well placed to capture this opportunity. With this, we conclude our prepared remarks and we will now hand it back to Ravi to take Q&A. Thank you, uh, Rohit. Thank you, Ritesh. Uh, we'll now move to the Q&A session. Uh, as always, we request you to kindly keep the questions to a maximum of two uh, so that we get to take as many questions as possible. Uh, in case you have any further questions, uh, please feel free to join the queue Q again. Uh, in addition to audio, uh, participants also have an option to post the questions on web. If there are any unanswered, we will take them at the end. With that, I'll uh, hand over the call back to Yashashree to manage the Q&A session for us. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. <coughs> we'll take a first question from the line of Abnish Roy from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my first question is on the liquids uh, across your categories. So in dishwash, uh, liquids, you have seen double-date volume growth. I wanted to understand uh, in dishwash uh, liquids, what is the salience of liquids in the overall portfolio? And uh, if I take it parallelly to a personal wash and fabric wash, what is the salience of liquids there? Is, this, is there any uh, learning which you can translate from dishwash to these categories? I'm asking this because up front you have highlighted uh, dishwash liquids as a, as a big success. A uh, related question here itself on uh, fabric uh, dishwash, uh, liquid uh, fabric uh, uh, liquid uh, wash. So we have uh, one of your competitors come out with a 99 rupee disruptive pricing. So what are your thoughts on that? And uh, one related question here will be uh, in terms of uh, disruptive pricing in liquid. Uh, we have seen HUL being more of a uh, follower. Earlier we did see competitor launching uh, hand wash and uh, body wash ahead of you. So is there a thought process that uh, we can be ahead in terms of innovation, in terms of liquid, in uh, body wash and uh, uh, hand wash? Uh, how are you doing? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, I think there is some, uh, probably first I should try and uh, clarify a few things, because you, uh, in your question you stated some as facts, and I just want to make sure that we go get those right. Is that okay? Sure. So, Broadly, from uh, there is there is a, a macro secular trend of consumers moving towards liquids across categories. Second, uh, we have a total liquids business uh, in home care liquids of close to, uh, and I'm talking of fabric conditioners, uh, 
uh, fabric wash and dishwash included, to well in excess of 3,500 crores. So uh, uh, that's huge. And we've been the pioneers in fabric conditioner liquids, body wash, uh, in fabric wash liquids, and dishwash liquids, which is the reason why we are where we are. So that's the f first fact, just to clarify that we are not followers, but we are leaders. And it's not now, but it's been, it's been at least eight, nine years of building these categories. They haven't happened over, overnight. Uh, second, that uh, insofar as uh, specifically Vim is concerned, uh, in dishwash, it's already 25% of the dishwash sales, which is sizable. We have a very strong share, and uh, we, uh, the reason we showed that was we were very proud of what we've done there, and we believe that is, of course, a huge run of growth because consumers are, trans are, are upgrading to liquids, as I mentioned in the beginning, generally across, across categories. On body wash liquids, which is more in personal care space, we were again, uh, I, I'm not uh, speaking from facts, but we might have, I'm, I'm very, so, very confident we were the pioneers uh, many years ago and we have now multi-brand portfolio on shelves. Not only this, we are market leaders in body wash liquids globally and are gaining shares handsomely in uh, India as well. Uh, and the growth rates are uh, in 50, 60% and beyond, and we do see, because the penetration of liquid, body wash liquid is quite small, is under 2 odd percent, that there is a large uh, runway of growth in body wash liquids, and we have a full portfolio at play and technology, which is uh, on shelf and in the pipeline, whether it's through Dove, Pairs, or Lux, or Lifebuoy, which is, uh, uh, which is another uh, brand we have uh, to play, specifically in hand wash. So to round up all of this, I just want to say that we have been pioneers in the liquids category in India uh, across segments in home care and personal care. We have built a business short of 4,000 crores, which is not small by any circumstances. And yes, there is more competition now, especially in fabric wash liquids, in what we call Tier 2. And speaking of Tier 2, uh, or now that uh, the market's fragmenting and opening up, there are many players, not just uh, one, which have entered the market, uh, given the market is now quite sizable, uh, whether it's global players or local players. We do have a portfolio player, as we have in many of the categories we play in. We have RIN, which is in the market, and at a, a tier two price, with a great product, and a, a unbeatable value for the consumer, and you should and will see a lot more action on the front of both Surfexa liquid and liquid, RIN liquid when it comes to fabric wash. So I hope it gives you a sense of sentiment and commitment uh, and decisiveness around the space. Sure, uh, just one follow-up. Uh, in terms of uh, the fabric wash, uh, what will be the salience of liquid? And uh, my comment on uh, the follower was only based on the, the disruptive pricing, absolutely on your size, etc., liquids and uh, the first entry, I think clearly you have done a commendable job. So if you could give clarity on the salience uh, in terms of fabric, what's the liquid? Uh, on fabrics, just help me with the numbers, uh, 20%? Yeah. Exactly. We're in that sort of range, and I uh, uh, don't hold me exactly to that number, but in that sort of range, but growing at 20%, so fast growth uh, part of our portfolio, but we still do, of course, have a larger business in bars and powders. But we're talking of a, I mean, we're talking of a massive category. Uh, so, therefore, uh, and, and the growth is in liquids. And as you mentioned, there's also now the tier 2 at 99 rupees or thereabouts. Other brands from uh, other players to across, uh, across the uh, industry. And uh, we will, uh, therefore, see more growth coming here because the, uh, the conversion is becoming easier since cost per wash is not quite accessible for more customers. And we have a very large share in the segment. We intend to uh, fight the hardest to keep it. Sure, thanks. Uh, my second and last question will be on the outlook. Uh, so you mentioned uh, that uh, there is a gradual improvement in FMCG demand in terms of outlook. And you mentioned uh, the reasons uh, will be essentially uh, partly monsoon, partly improving macro. Uh, my question here is uh, last uh, two years we have also seen uh, rural customer uh, spend more on education, more on uh, the medical needs uh, because he's getting a lot of free foods, freebies, etc. So he's uh, going for uh, better... Uh, uh, life for uh, uh, his kids in terms of better education, more on the medical, etc. Now the issue is uh, post-elections, uh, very clearly, telecom charges will increase 10% to 20%. That is the correct expectation. And that's, again, a big component for the lower end of rural customer. 
so how do you see that kind of impact uh, is is monsoon enough to overcome this kind of issue because for the lower end uh, 10 to 20% hike in uh, some of the cost component can be uh, quite uh, severe right you you right avish uh, there is clearly trans, uh, there is um, as uh, consumers are evolving their uh, monthly consumption uh, from based on the service that came up recently but we are a very small part of the consumption basket as fmcg this uh, so many more categories there and uh, indeed over the last uh, few years because the inflation or price increase were quite sizable uh, they had an impact on uh, a rural especially as it came through covid and, and inflation uh, shocks but i think we are seeing gradual recovery we are hopeful of a better monsoon and monsoon does have an impact as we all know Uh, it not not be the only impact, but it does have an impact on the agri economy and therefore rural consumption. And I think, in that sense, most likely the worst is past us. And from here onwards, we do see gradual recovery in rural uh, consumption. Uh, and of course, as we said, the urban consumption has been more resilient, especially at the premium end. So sure, thanks. Uh, that's all for my side. Thank you. Thanks, Amish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hi team, uh, just one question on uh, both laundry and uh, HFD. Uh, you know the growth what you have delivered and what should be the outlook. Uh, you know we should be thinking about. And secondly on beauty, which I'll come after this. Uh, on laundry, uh, uh, in general, it could help us understand how do we think about the medium term because there seems to be a deceleration in the overall volume growth. uh you know so what i'm trying to understand is uh, the heavy lifting for laundry growth has been delivered by premium session uh, i understand the uh, the solid to liquid or powder to liquid uh, conversion but if we talk about the premium session otherwise which is happening in the powders etc which is an integral element to the let's say pushing this to double digits that's one second it's heartening to note that in hft there is a high single digit growth again it would help us with the drivers of growth and the sustainability and one specific comment would be helpful are we back to 2019 volumes in hfd uh, i can take yeah, up the yeah, uh, second part was hfc or hfd hfd, HFD so one i think it took yeah. for alex right health food drinks actually in general yeah, yeah, yeah. nutrition nutrition uh, functional nutrition so i can yeah. speak to laundry first it's um, can be close to my heart again as i used to uh, be in this for a long time i think uh, we are uh, our business in now uh, in in laundry fabric wash and conditioners very robust uh, we are uh, uh, growing powders continue to grow in volume uh, the recovery uh, and liquids as i mentioned before uh, are ahead of this because the conversion is fast there and of course there's more competitive heat there in so far as uh, bars are concerned they are now returning back as we corrected prices so some of the volume improvement will come on account of the bars going back to growth and powder sustaining and liquids continue to going uh, ahead uh, and uh, so i think uh, we feel confident that secularly this category will continue to sort of clock volume growth it's also showing showing quite durable quite level of durability through all the cycles if you look back quarter to quarter and here uh, the job remains that of premiumization we have to upgrade consumers to higher convenience and performance uh, and that's how we're doing that's what we're doing with uh, Uh, high performance liquids uh, now with win and the fabric conditioners and other formats are in in the pipeline so i think that path to growth uh, including surfex and easy wash upgrading rural consumers is still the engine is very much uh, uh, vibrant and relevant so that i hope it addresses your question of uh, the home care business so sure. thanks thanks okay on uh, on nutrition the functional nutrition i just probably request yeah. uh, request well so uh, manoj on uh, functional nutrition uh, our business grew in high single digit and the growth was uh, driven both by some amount of pricing and volume growth so it was a good mix of volume growth and price growth that drove uh, high single digit overall growth for our functional nutrition business and if i just give a little more color uh, within that as you know we have our plus range uh, which is high science back portfolio beat uh, protein beat diabetes Or, or for that matter, women Horlicks. This part of the business has seen more acceleration. Uh, a is more premium, and it has seen more acceleration in terms of growth. So it's a pretty good outcome. And uh, we have spoken uh, in the past as well that our trajectory of building penetration has yielded results uh, continuously. Uh, we continue to build penetration improvement uh, for the category, uh, for us and for the industry. Number one. Number two. We also seen further improvement in our market share, both value and volume market share. 
And one of the key areas we've spoken in the last call, especially we've spoken about uh, driving consumption uh, in HFD because that's what had taken a beating uh, in the high inflationary period. And milk was one of the, uh, let me say, limiting factor which was impacting consumption. Uh, good news is you've seen, uh, as you know, fresh milk prices have uh, tapered off. They're, they're, they're more benign now. There's no further inflation happening. And uh, overall commodities which go into making HFD has also seen some amount of deflation. So all put together, the, the, the pricing and the cost element uh, is now going to help us in terms of driving further consumption bills. And we are seeing initial results of consumption bills coming in. The job of doing home to home and ensuring that we're able to get the product pretty well established and known to consumers, that effort continues. And uh, I'm assuming that between that effort and overall macro improving uh, in terms of our commodity costs in the foods area, it is helping us now to start seeing the results that we always wanted to see in this space. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's a little bit about uh, HFD in terms of uh, top line. In terms of bottom line, uh, the job of uh, doing margin improvement has been very successful as we called out. And going forward, the focus singularly for us remains keep building consumption. Thank you, Ritesh. Uh, uh, just quickly a follow-up here. Uh, are we back to 2018, 2019 sort of indexed volumes, uh, you know, in the nutrition business? Uh, the volumes are uh, back. They're growing. And as I mentioned, uh, the key job for us uh, is to ensure that we start keep building the consumption as penetrations have improved already. So number of units have improved due to start seeing consumption improving, and that is the focus area for us. Fair enough. Uh, and lastly, I just want to make a statement of hypothesis and just trust test, you know, whether it's the right way of thinking. Uh, you know, when I look at calendar year 2023, uh, you know, we have seen, let's say, the startup uh, funding has declined 70% in one queue. The number what I saw is another 30%, et cetera. Uh, it does appear that uh, it's a great enabling environment, uh, you know, for a large company like HUL with all the capabilities to outperform in beauty. Uh, is that the right statement of hypothesis, uh, let's say, when I can I make for the next 24 months? Assuming the Petros Paribus, uh, you know, template, uh, the, what we see currently in the market remains. Yeah, for the beauty segment, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. See, beauty, uh, as uh, we mentioned as part of the prepared remarks, uh, and if you unpack the, the category growth in current year, uh, beauty has grown uh, mid-single digit. And um, if I see that and if I further unpack, the premium part of the portfolio has grown in double digit. And it's a mass part of the portfolio which had declined, and given the conversation we had on rural macros, etc., and we, we did call out one of the, one of the slides, uh, the six big bets that we want to take in beauty segment going forward. Uh, we, we named them in the slides being sun care, face cleansing, masters, serums, and stuff like that. These segments put together is 2,000 crore business for us, growing at strong double digit. And within that, the e-commerce of this footprint of this business is growing at 50% plus. So the way we see going forward in the beauty space, uh, two or three clear call outs. The market will keep fragmenting. The market will keep getting more premiumized. And more demand spaces, sub-demand spaces will keep opening up. Six are the ones which we have called out that we are going to lean in. And, and this is where you will end up seeing more amount of actions. Uh, in terms of portfolio brand, uh, all three jobs to be done. Uh, number one, uh, extending the current brands into more demand spaces. So be it ponds, getting into more serums and more and sun care. I'm seeing examples like that, or uh, lack for that matter or be uh, bringing brands uh, to capture new demand spaces. A classic example of that was simple beauty in the clean beauty space, or for that matter, neurology. Uh, and those brands uh, will be needed to ensure that the upcoming demand spaces we are able to address and start making business with. And third, goes without saying, as we mentioned and called out earlier as well, that we're always active in the space in terms of any inorganic opportunity that we need to do. Uh, and if at all something comes across, which is the right value, uh, we will lean into that as well. So all three elements of uh, making our own brand, leveraging brands of Unilever, of course leveraging technology globally, and ensuring that the demand spaces that we called out is what we keep focusing on. And we are seeing those results uh, coming in, as I called out and quoted numbers of the current quarter on those segments. So we will go behind where there is growth in the space. Super. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rohit and Ritesh, and all the best. Thank you, Manoj. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Arnab Mitra from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my first question was on the soaps business. So there has obviously been a very sharp deterioration in the performance here. And in the context that I, um, our understanding is some of your competitors are doing better, could you just 
take a minute to make us understand what exactly has gone wrong here in terms of value proposition value equation that you mentioned uh, is it driven by competitive intensity spike or is it that the brand equities have worsened uh, and therefore you need to invest back if you could just help unpack uh, what exactly is the problem here and how much time do you think it could take sure no absolutely we 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 very much would like to because uh, first of all uh, so we we do we don't take this uh, lightly uh, and in the, particularly this quarter uh, we've seen an inferior performance and we are addressing we have addressed it and let me just unpack for you really the causality and really what we have done uh, on the whole uh, as you know it's, it's a sizable business for us we have a strong portfolio we have increased a level of ant investments uh since or uh, middle of last year after we had space to invest as the commodity softened uh we have improved the product formulations of all of our uh, uh key brands like for lux top pairs and hamam and they are now super, the superior levels in products is strong i'm heart, i'm heartened to say that the brand power is in fact recently had a reading come is strengthening so i think on a at a brand level uh, we are uh, moving the right direction so what the the real issue of this decline in volume uh was essentially because price effectively is because we're lapping a a price decrease uh based and therefore that is i think generally true for uh, for the industry but volume which is dipped uh, materially this quarter is the one that uh, is is what we are addressing and that was largely because of the mass end of the portfolio so life boy and lux especially life boy where we saw <coughs> uh in in past we sell low unit price uh uh we were off the value equation more uh, recently uh in the last uh, few quarters uh, and 